All right, today I'm going to be putting the uh, four-wheel drive back into my Stampede. In one of my previous videos, we took the four-wheel drive out because we broke the front axle and we wanted to keep bashing that day. So we're going to put the four-wheel drive back in it today. Uh, basically, we pulled the center drive shaft out, we pulled the front diff out, pulled off the front axles, and converted the front axles into uh, just... Uh, wheel carriers so that I could put the wheels back on. You do not need a lot of tools for this. Uh, just a couple of pieces out of here. Um, we'll need the X-Acto knife, a straight blade screwdriver just to pop off the wheel hexes. A power driver makes this a lot easier and to clean the bearings we'll use PB Blaster and then we'll oil them back up with three in one. Uh, I am also going to try something I haven't done before. I'm going to pack completely the front diff housing with this uh, Lucas green grease. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but we're going to try it. So we'll get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, pull the wheels off. Uh, this machine is dirty. I have not cleaned it since the last time we bashed, so you're going to see some filth and that's... Uh, just going to be the way it is. And we need to remove the steering linkage. Okay, and then there's just four bolts to hold the front on. We can see two of them right there. And I don't know. Well, there's one right there. And the other one is, it won't focus, but you see it down in there. And that's it. That's all that holds the front on. Now, normally when you pull the four-wheel drive one apart, the drive shaft comes out with the front. Obviously been removed on this vehicle. Okay, now we need to remove the five screws here on the bottom and the two and the bumper up here on top. Let's see if I can get the light on that. Actually, there's four. So we need to remove these four. One, two, three, and then the fourth one down there. The ones for the front bumper. Then the two smaller ones. Alright, and this front blue piece also has to come off. We do need to remove both the shocks. The silver washers are very easy to lose. Now the diff will lift right up. And obviously we will have to clean and degrease this area completely before we pack it up with grease again. Uh, but there's just a couple of bolts left to take out of here so that we can get that diff housing completely in too. So two of these are longer and two of them are shorter. And you can just put them in their home for the time being so you can keep them straight. So a lot of filth fell out of here. That's where we ran it while it was in two-wheel drive. We will get all of this cleaned up. Then we'll be ready to put it back together. All right, we have our diff housings uh, clean and dry. Next step, I'm going to clean these bearings. 
The blue dust shield can be popped off uh, pretty easily with an X-Acto knife. And I clean them with PB Blaster and then re-oil them. Then we'll let them soak for a minute. So our diff housings are clean and dry. I've got my bearings soaking in PB Blaster. Uh, you also want to spray the bearings directly to flush any uh, crap out of there. I'm going to get these cleaned up, oiled back up, and then we'll start reassembling. All right, so I just use a piece of cardboard when I'm putting oil on my bearings. Okay, so it just takes a couple of drops of oil. I'm putting way more in here than is required. I already have the dust shields on the back side just to help hold the oil in. But all they are is dust shields. So these are not sealed bearings. And the dust shields pop in easy enough. Just line it. Push it with your finger. If you have a nice smooth bearing, you've done your job. All right, I have all my pieces ready. We're going to go ahead and reassemble this differential. Put our bearings back in and be good to go. So the two small bearings go in and out. Inside. Outside. Your pinion drops through. The differential will only go in one orientation. So, if you put it the wrong way, like I've got it here, it'll be at a cockeyed angle. It's just not going to go together. So, flip it. Put it the right way. Now, it's not going to take very much grease. A tub this size probably do many dozen of these differentials. We have it nice and packed. We're ready to assemble it. So I have my pieces here ready for reassembly. What we want to do is just concentrate on putting in these two bottom ones. That'll hold it together. Give us a little bit more to work with. rest of it together. So once we put these two bottom ones on, we'll also put this aluminum plate on the front and the diff housing will be secure. Now we just need to button up the shocks, put the skid plate on, put the drive shaft back in, and we're good to drive. Make sure the silver washer goes between the shoulder and the shock tower. The factory default for my truck and probably all of them was the center hole. We're getting closer. Right, once we're to this point, we'll put the front bumper on before we put the lower skid plate on. Lower skid. 
Skid Plate will go next. And two more bolts for the bumper. Now we just need to put the drive shaft in and the front axles. So the drive shaft has a uh, tiny grub screw that holds it to the front differential. This is the front end and the rear end is just splines. Uh, it's very easy to get it to line up with the rear so there's no concern there. What you want to do is go ahead and get it tightened to the front before you slide it in. So. It is keyed, just like that, and then we'll put that grub screw in. We've got nice smooth action. And this just slides. Get it low enough so you can see it. Just slides right in there. And it lined up perfectly on the first try. So, we put our four bolts in and hold the front back together. I'm not doing these all the way up with the tool until I'm sure I've got everything lined up correctly. And still you want to watch that you don't strip these out. Steering. Okay. Put our links back together. And by default, these links go in the bottom inside hole. Okay, so to get ready to put our front axles back in, we obviously need to take the uh, arms loose and we'll need to take the steering loose so that we can drop out this hub carrier. Uh, before we do that, we also want to snap off the wheel hex. You do that by just sticking a screwdriver in there and twisting. There will be a pin very very small pin you don't want to lose that it's usually in there with no friction at all as you just saw it'll just drop right out and there's a very small washer there that uh, you don't want to lose when you take off those uh, wheel hexes let's see if we can uh, get it to fall out there there you go you don't want to lose that We're on a new axle. We get a new grub screw, which goes in the axle where it attaches to the differential that we just worked on. Is that gonna focus? I don't know if it's gonna focus. And this is also keyed. 
So it would only go in there one way. I can't get a very good shot of it, but uh, it is keyed. Once you get it in there, it's just a matter of putting the grub screw on that half and it's locked in place. Put it in at an angle just like this. So I still have the screwdriver in the screw that we were working with. Gosh, I just can't get a good view. All right, other side is the same as the one we just did. And here's the piece that we made uh, just so I'd have a, something to hold the front wheel on. You can see where I ground the ears off. We need to take that black washer off of there. Take a bearing off. These bearings are rebuilt at the time, so they should be fine. We'll put our bearing back on the new axle and put it into place. You should not have to pull off the, the hub carrier. There you go. Went right into place. Sometimes these wheel hexes can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to put in place, so um, this is how I do it. We'll put that little black washer on first, then we'll put the pin in place. Now, if you put the pin in place horizontally, it'll just stay there. I don't know how you would do it any other way. Now, as far as the hex, the hex is keyed on the back. Line that up with the pin. And I push him in. It's got to push in until it clicks with the 7 millimeter driver, the same you take the wheel nuts off with. You'll push until you hear it click. And he's locked in place. We're good to go. Okay, we're all together. And uh, it's just as smooth as it can be. So I'm really pleased with that. Everything seems to be good. We'll have to get it out on the road and do a road test with it. So thank you very much for watching.